All right, y'all, welcome back to Come With Arms channel. Okay, so today we're checking out the PC-18 from Varosteleka. Now, the PC-18 isn't a new product from them, but their newest variant, the Snow M05 variant, is kind of like their newest rendition of it. Now, I was pretty excited to get it because one, Varosteleka is a very cool company. I love working with them. I love working with their products. But at the same time, like, I don't really have a whole lot of snow camouflage stuff and snow mo5 is pretty cool and it works pretty freaking well uh, i'll actually put up a picture over here so you guys can see how effective the camouflage pattern is so i was excited to get it here in washington state we get snow every now and again uh, but yeah i didn't have any snow camouflage i didn't invest in any snow camouflage so whenever it snowed i was kind of just you know sticking out like a sore thumb so it was pretty cool to get some stuff especially from finland because Washington and Finland look kind of alike. So yeah, it works really well in this environment. But yeah, we're gonna be checking out the PC-18. Now, as you look at it now, it doesn't it doesn't come like completely set up like this. It comes in a few different components based off of what you need, what you wanna purchase, and what you wanna supplement with other products if, if you want to. You can kind of take it piece by piece and then assemble it. And it's all pretty simple. I will say I messed it up and had to ask uh, Jenny at Varseleka how I was doing it because it was just blowing my mind for whatever reason. Once she told me, it made a whole lot of sense, but um, yeah, I'll get into that a little bit later. Now we'll kind of talk about all the different components separately, but of course we're gonna talk about the play carrier as a whole. Now what we're gonna be talking about is the, the durability, of course, like the materials, the like how it was actually made. The comfort is going to be a big one. The modularity as far as what does and does not work with this, what accessories are actually available, especially in this camouflage pattern and then talking about kind of how they compare with other plate carriers. Cause again, I've used maybe like 15 different types of plate carriers, like well enough to be comfortable with them and kind of understand what I do and don't like. So we'll kind of talk about that aspect as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I've taken this to the range like three times now. Uh, it got a little bit dirty. So, I mean, that's the thing with snow camouflage, it's gonna get dirty, especially if you're not working with it in the snow. like. Like I was, I was working with it usually when there wasn't any snow, kind of just a lot of mud. So you can imagine that's going to happen. Now with that usage, it is a little bit limited as far as my experience with this particular play carrier. But again, using a bunch of other play carriers, I kind of understand what does and doesn't work, at least what I prefer. And that's a big thing, preferences versus, you know, kind of like modularity. And another thing when it comes to me being prior Marine and Army Infantry, there's certain things that I really like to see in play carriers generally then being like really streamlined. So we'll kind of talk about that aspect as well as far as how it pertains to kind of my infantry brain when it comes to, you know, my time in the Marine Corps and the Army and what I kind of grew to like and dislike about certain play carriers. But yeah, that's basically the overview. So we'll go ahead and get right into it. So again, it does come in a few different components. So you'll have the plate bags, which run about 190, 190 US dollars, if I remember correctly. Now you also have the shoulder straps, which you can purchase separately. You have the placard, which we have here, uh, made for the uh, RK62 or RK95 magazines. We also have these just standard PALS acceptable mag pouches you can kind of just throw on the side. And again, these are also set up for the RK62. And then we also have the utility pouch on the side and then the dangler. So as a whole, the system works really well with you know what you can kind of buy for it. Varselecca did a good job with releasing this because they have a lot of awesome accessories you can add to it. Like I will say, so if you take off the, sorry about the Velcro noise. If you take off these shoulder straps, that's kind of what it looks like there. You just have that that nylon, I think it's a, a 1000D Cordura, which it's a pretty good material. A lot of people use the 1000D uh, Denier or whatever Cordura because it's got a slightly thicker yarn. So it's a little bit better when it comes to like punctures and kind of just general abrasion resistance. So pretty solid material all around. Basically it's extremely common when it comes to tactical gear to use this kind of material. But I will say um, the edges, can definitely get a little bit uncomfortable, especially if you have like plates. Right now I just have like training plates in, so they're not as heavy, but I can imagine if you had like full plates, then these might start to get a little bit uncomfortable if they start digging into one side. So having this as an option is nice. I know a lot of people and I, I tend to like really streamlined plate carrier designs like this, where it's like kind of minimalistic, but when you're wearing a plate carrier for an extended period of time and your traps are just getting like really, really like pressure pointed and you start getting knots, it really, really sucks. So having this as an option is clutch. So you have like a nice padded material you can kind of see there. 
feels really nice. And again, it's pretty simple to put on. All you have to do is slip it under and then you just have the, the hook and loop and then it's good to go. You can see on the sides, you also have these kind of hook and loop straps. So these are nice because if you have like a camelback or any sort of hydration system, or even like a comm setup, you can feed any of those wires from the side or the back, and you can feed the wires of the tube through here and kind of just keep them from moving around a lot. Because again, something you'll see a lot in the US military is people, they'll have their camelback because it's like something that the unit designates they need to have, but the play carrier setup doesn't work too well. So you'll have like, you know, their hydration tube will slip like under the elbow, which is, you know, not fun when you see like, they'll just end up ripping it out and then it'll just be like hanging all over the place. Or of course, when you have wires and stuff, you don't want to have any of that loose stuff. It's nice to have it nice and streamlined and it's nice to be able to keep it in place. So I haven't seen this with many plate carrier designs. Doing a quick comparison with something else. So this is the Agilite K0. So you can see here, we have this sort of elastic loop kind of coming out, which does the same sort of thing. Um, I tend to prefer elastic just because one, it's not as loud. I just don't like hearing Velcro at all. It really, especially again, it's that infantry brain. I don't like feeling it. I don't like seeing it. I don't like having it for the most part. It's very necessary when it comes to plate carriers, but I'm just not a big fan of it. I would rather have something like elastic just because it's not as loud. It's not going to cut you as much and it's not going to you know, move around as much as well. Generally speaking, this would be fine, but it's happened where, you know, I've hit it and it's kind of come, come like mostly undone like that. And it's just nice when it's a little bit more streamlined, kind of like something like this. But again, having that ability is something that a lot of play carriers don't have. I would say maybe 95% of the play carriers that I've used didn't have anything like that. So you got your one in the front and then you also have one in the back over here. Now the play carrier itself also has that same sort of setup. So if you're feeding the wires or the tube a little bit lower, you also have these two Velcro straps that come out on the side here. Again, serves a really solid purpose. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I, I think there's probably some other solutions that you could probably work either with elastic or maybe just like, a, maybe even like a smaller elastic loop would be kind of a little bit better because again, I just don't like having stuff like this, either stuff that sticks out or stuff that's like kind of, again, loud. And then if you either roll it, you can kind of, you know, minimize it for the most part. But if it goes underneath and it's like, you know, in between your plates and your body, it's gonna get kind of annoying. And even if you try and flatten them out, you still kind of feel it a little bit. And if you try and tuck it in, because again, like, some people won't have an issue with that just chilling there or that being like wrapped up. But for me, again, it's just something that if I'm not using it, I'd rather it just be, you know, not there or very like minimalistic. So I'm not noticing it. And you'll notice that's kind of a recurring theme when it comes to these play carrier views is I just really like when things are as streamlined as possible um, or just kind of like are out of the way as much as possible if I'm not using it. And again, that's just an infantry brain. But again, the feature is there, it's nice. It's better to have it and not need it than to you know need it or want it and not have that sort of option. Now, moving to the placard itself, this is just your standard placard. Again, it's made for this RK kind of like AK magazines. So you just have the hook and loop on the back and then you have the G hooks. So you can just pop it right off and it's super easy. So there you go. It's nice, especially if you have like a, a backpack setup. Actually here. It's nice if you have like a backpack setup that has that sort of hook and loop setup already in there. So if you want, you can kind of just, you know, throw some extra ammo in there like that. And then, you know, you could either give it to your buddy or just chuck it on your plate carrier as opposed to moving the magazines around, you know, sometimes when they're really stuck in there or, you know, you have gear that does this, it's easier to just rip it out and then stick it back on. Again, it's just the G hooks that you have to worry about. So yeah, placards are an awesome thing. And if you're, you know, maybe rocking a different weapon system or what have you, it's nice to be able to just, you know, take any old placard and throw that sucker on. As long as it, you know, you got the G hooks and you have that hook and loop, you're gonna be good. Now there's a lot of plate carriers that are adopting the placard setup. So again, as long as you have like the sort of mounting hardware, you can kind of see here and it has that hook and loop, it'll accept it. So we're seeing that more and more when it comes to play carrier. So this is the uh, Ferro Concepts Slickster. And again, it's very similar to the PC-18 as far as that minimalistic sort of mentality and just really utilizing that hook and loop 
and you know attachments like those G hooks to be able to change things up pretty quickly and keep them relatively streamlined. But again, this is set up for the RK62, so we have a couple of magazines. So I don't have any RK magazines. I imagine, I don't even know if they're different to be honest from AK magazines, but we have a Magpul AK magazine and a standard Bakelite. If I could get an RK62 or an RK95 in the US, I would be ecstatic, but I don't know, I don't see them too often. Um, but yeah, I will say this placard, um, again, it is designed for the RK62 mags, but with these magazines specifically, it's a little tight. So honestly, I prefer it that way because I, you guys already know, I'm not a huge fan of bungees. Um, they are great for retention. It's great to have that option. Um, however, I just am not a big fan of them just because again, you usually have like this excess bungee kind of coming out on the bottom. I know you can kind of adjust the tension depending on maybe the magazine size or what have you. You can kind of adjust that. Um, but I have seen some magazine pouches where the bungee is kind of just like sewed in and I kind of tend to prefer that if I do have the bungees. But generally speaking, again, if it's this tight, like you can probably just rock it without the bungee and you'll be fine. But so that one fits okay. Let's try the other AK magazine. Let's put this one upside down. I generally don't like to put AK magazines upside down because they tend to get stuck on the feeding lip or the locking lip but yeah this one's a little bit easier to get out so probably rock the the bungees with that now it does work pretty well with ar magazines um i did use this when i was shooting and i only had my ar that day and it worked great those bungees are a nice option again you guys already know i just don't tend to prefer them so for a placard or magazine pouch works pretty well now there are some things that aren't as obvious like i mean you got your drainage grommets on the bottom so you don't have water pulling on the side but you also have these loops so if you want to sort of rock it as like a chest rig setup, you can do that as well, as long as you have the harness. And then it also comes with a fabric backing that you can kind of attach or detach. So if you do run it like that, it's not gonna be scraping up your combat top or what have you. But yeah, it's still 1000 Denier Cordura. I think the stitching is going to hold up for a while, but again, I haven't really tested it that much. So I guess we'll have to see. But for placard, works pretty well. Not really a whole lot you can say about it. It's, it's pretty well designed. Now you have your standard sort of utility pouch here. So if you actually open this sucker up, you can see on the outside, you got your standard hook and loop. So if you want to throw like a patch or something, that's always nice to have as an option. But on the inside, you also have sort of an interior pocket here, which is nice if you want to sort of separate things. Um, especially for me, I'm gonna be using this more of as like a, a medical pouch for the time being until I can get like a proper setup. And then on the sort of flap, you also have two elastic loops here, which are awesome again for sort of separating things, keeping things from moving around. If you wanna put like a multi-tool or something in there, you have that ability. I, for me, I just have some gauze in here right now. I'm gonna just kit it out with a bunch of medical stuff. But again, same materials, really solid zippers. I gotta say, I'm a big fan of nice zippers and these have some, some smooth zippers, which you know, if you have zippers that like catch a lot, especially on tactical gear, it's gonna be really, really annoying, especially when you get like any sort of dirt in there. Like you need to have some nice zippers when it comes to this kind of stuff. Cause you're, if you're fighting to get inside your pouches, you're gonna get really pissed off really quickly. But yeah, for an admin sort of utility pouch, works well. This is one of the smaller ones. I think they have a few different sizes. Um, I'll kind of throw them up over here so you guys can check out all of those. Actually, I'll put up all the accessories real quick just in case you guys were kind of wondering what accessories are available that I don't actually have on this one. So I will say there are a lot, which is awesome to see. Now, as far as the dangler, again, was not like a big fan of dangler pouches at all until pretty recently, I would say until like two years ago. But now that I've used the dangler, like I, I can't, I can't not use them basically because they are just super, super convenient. But again, you have your sort of hook and loop set up there. So if you want to throw some patches on, you got like pretty good space in this thing, I will say. And the organization again is nice because you have your two interior pockets there. So you can separate things. Again, I like to throw a lot of medical stuff in here, but if you have like a map, it's just, it's really easy and accessible to have something like this as opposed to like maybe an admin pouch up here or a kangaroo pouch. Those can get kind of like annoying when you're trying to like 
really look for stuff. So having a dangler is just, it's nice. As long as you don't put anything too heavy in there, because uh, that's not going to feel too great. Yeah, it's, it's a great thing for organization and extra storage. That's just out of the way. Now, the feature I love the most is definitely going to be these elastic chem light loops because it's such a smart thing. Like you don't realize how awesome chem lights are until you're like a leader and you need to mark something. You can, you know, mark a casualty control point. You can mark a room cleared. You can mark an unsafe area. You can mark a lane. You can do a bunch of stuff with chem lights, which is why the military loves them. So having chem lights, you know, this easily at your disposal is just clutch. So you have six in total. Right now I only have five chem lights in here, but again, you can have like a bunch of different colors. You can kind of arrange it like that. And it's very easy to get to. You kind of know it's there, but it's also kind of out of the way. So they're not getting like pushed out or, or whatnot. It does hold them pretty well, but if you do need to put them back in, no issues there. So that is a very solid addition. It's funny because with my army issued plate carrier, I don't even think this would was advertised for chem lights. I think it was advertised for like shotgun shells, but I ended up putting chem lights in there because again, I use chem lights a lot, especially when it comes to close quarter battle, when you want to make sure you mark a room cleared or not, you can chuck a chem light and it's nice when they're very easily at your disposal, especially like place like this, because sometimes I'll have chem lights in my backpack or whatnot, and I'll kind of forget they're there because they've just been chilling there for so long. But for having them so easily accessible, it's nice because I can remember, oh, I have this, I can just grab it really quick. And I think it's such a small thing, but a lot of the danglers don't do stuff like that. And I think it's very important because yeah, you need to mark stuff and chem lights are an awesome thing. So why not do that, you know? And then on the side, again, we have those standard pals uh, or Molly, whatever, uh, magazine pouches. So you can just attach them to the cummerbund here and easy day. Again, they do come with the bungees. I took them off because I just wasn't a fan. I think it held the magazines well enough where they weren't falling out. So that's kind of why it looks like that. Now I will say for the actual attachments for these, so I wouldn't say I didn't like it, but it was something that kind of triggered my infantry like spidey senses. So generally speaking, when you have you know, Molly or, or Pals, and you have the straps, there's usually like a snap at the bottom. So when you're done weaving it, you can fold it back and snap it in. Or there's usually like a tab that you can kind of pull it and secure it through itself. But with this, it has like a plastic insert. You can kind of see that black plastic insert. So you weave it and then you kind of just fold it back in. I think this is how it's supposed to be done. Again, none of this stuff came with instructions, which for the average person is going to be totally fine. But of course for infantry, we like when stuff is kind of broken down Barney style. Um, so instructions do help. So I guess that's one recommendation. So people don't mess it up and start doing videos where they don't know what they're talking about. But yeah, I will say it's something that kind of caught me off guard a little bit, but I'll say like, they're not really going anywhere unless you're like really hitting down on this. Like it's, it's not going to be going anywhere. And if it's inside, that's not really an issue, but I kind of like how it's again, a little bit flatter. There's no snap buttons that you're kind of feeling anywhere. So it's nice and flat, nice and streamlined. And I mean, again, I kind of wanted to dislike it a little bit at first, but I mean, it just works. Maybe they're just being smart about it to be honest, but yeah, something that kind of caught me off guard, but really not an issue whatsoever. Maybe even like a positive to be honest. So yeah, kind of an interesting design there. But as far as the plate bags itself, um, again, you do have the cummerbund. The cummerbund is something you get separately. So again, if you have like another cummerbund or if you want to get like specific size, you can get that specific cummerbund. But yeah, the cummerbunds are basically, again, your Cordura nylon and you can just molly it. It's kind of like your skeletonized cummerbund. And then you have your hook and loop. Now, the thing that kind of threw me off again, just because I want to blame it on not having instructions, but it's literally just me being an idiot. So if you undo this, so we have our, this is where your plate would go. I mean, no issue with the actual plate itself. Like it fits in there, it doesn't move around a lot. And really there's not a whole lot you can say about that, but you can see here, this is how the setup is supposed to be. Uh, I, I think I have a picture. If I have a picture, I'll put it up about how I originally set it up. And um, yeah, it was just, it wasn't really set up how it was supposed to. And I think I got it right this time. <laughs> but again, it was kind of interesting because you had this elastic um, kind of lanyard here that was 
going through the different loops of the cummerbunds and then kind of feeding through this kind of main pa panel area here uh, works pretty well again you have like a little bit of flex as well since you have that elastic um, which I kind of prefer, especially having like a little bit of elasticity or flex in your cummerbund is nice because if you're taking a knee or if you're going prone or if you're kind of like moving side to side, it's nice to have a little bit of give so you're not just like pinching yourself or like really fighting your play carrier to get into certain movements. So that is kind of like a really smart design. But again, it's just, it's different. So it really sort of threw me off. But yeah, I, I think I got it right. If not, um, yeah, they'll, they'll probably cancel me down in the comments and that's fine. It, <laughs> again, you kind of have to make things simple for people like me sometimes. <laughs> we don't like different things, but it's a, it's a good design, honestly. It's a kind of a cool design. There's a lot of like really interesting thoughts that went into this plate carrier and its, its accessories. Now on the inside itself, again, pretty standard. You do have um, these pads, which you can get sort of separately. Um, I don't think I prefer them. Uh, I think it's fine without it because it's still got, it doesn't necessarily have like padding, but it's not really like uncomfortable whatsoever. But I think if you have plates that are, you know, generally plate sized and generally have some curve to it, it'll be fine. Not going to be an issue whatsoever. I think it'll be totally comfortable. And for most of it, I was wearing it without these pads. So it's totally fine without them, but they are an option. I will say they feel kind of weird. Maybe if they were square, I wouldn't feel it as much, but since they're round, I feel like sort of pressure points, if that makes sense. If it was square, maybe it would like kind of the surface area would like equal out or something. I don't know, some Rain Man kind of stuff. But yeah, if it's circle, I, I feel like I feel it a little bit more, but it is interesting. I've been trying it and I, I still don't know how to feel about it. I still don't think I like them, but they do have a lot of nice airflow. I mean, the material itself is like a mesh material, nice pad. I mean, it, it's comfortable. And again, it sort of pushes it a little bit off of your body. So you get a lot more airflow. So I haven't tried it for any extended periods of time, but I think it might be kind of clutch when it comes to those long days when it's super hot and you just need like a little bit of breathable room. So yeah, again, an interesting design, something that I don't think I've ever seen in another play carrier, but yeah, it's again, I, I think they make it square might be better, but I'm not really too sure. But again, an interesting design nonetheless. But yeah, as far as the play carrier goes, that's basically it. Again, solid modularity. There's a lot of different accessories. I will say, Varus Deleka, they probably can monopolize the Snow M05 market when it comes to this play carrier, which, I mean, I'll say let them because it's, it's a solid product. Uh, again, the materials are pretty standard. I mean, again, that 1000 Denier Cordura is like what, same material in my K5 over here. So it's pretty much the standard in a lot of different tactical uh, equipment and gear. I will say there is some things I don't like with that material sometimes, especially when you like tend to fold it and you don't tuck the corners away like that well, kind of like what we're seeing here. Again, this is like a very, very minute thing, not gonna be an issue for a lot of people. It wasn't really an issue for me on the range, except in one position when I was trying to move past the barricade, I was having these corners kind of rub my traps. So I'll probably just end up taping it down, to be honest. Once you size it, you'll be good anyway. But again, like even for certain things like this on the, the shoulder pads, eh, got that edge those corners and they might start getting a little bit annoying if you keep doing like a repeated movement but again for the most parts in most of the positions I didn't notice any of that at all um, except for these as well but really not an issue the adjustability is great again you could add a lot of stuff to it I think it's going to last a pretty long time to be honest from what I've seen the stitching is is definitely looking like it's going to hold the material is solid um, the build quality itself, as far as like the actual cut and the shaping of everything, haven't had any issues with that. No issues getting the plates in or anything. So it's a solid product and I'm excited to see what they do kind of with this pattern specifically because I'm just a big fan of the Snow M05 pattern. But I'm also excited to see what they do in the future because having like, again, a lot of this these interesting thoughts to have like these loops, having these pads, a lot of these features that you don't see with like other pieces of gear, it's just awesome to see. It goes to show that they're putting a lot of thought into trying to add these features that a lot of people want or you know might even need it in certain environments and they don't have that so they kind of have to do these workarounds, kind of like what you saw with my other play carrier with the chem lights. So, I mean, it's not 
too much of a, a pain in the butt to do that for the most part. But it's nice when you have a system that kind of just does that from the start. But yeah, I will say I'm excited. Again, they do have some other Snow MO5 products. So we have the, the their backpack here. Again, really big fan of these zippers. <laughs> They're just really satisfying. But yeah, you have the backpack here. And then you also have the helmet cover, which you guys might've seen in the background, which, yeah, this is a Team Wendy uh, bump helmet and works well. I imagine it probably works pretty well on pretty much any sort of high cut helmets, but yeah, you got the bungees. I did cut this part off because it generally goes like that and I just really hate these things with a passion. I don't know why, it's just, I can't find any good place to put this little plastic push button part. So I just ended up cutting it and putting it there and you know, I get enough retention. So if I do need to mount a strobe or what have you, I can still do that. And I don't have to worry about tucking this thing away. Again, just really small pet peeves of mine that really don't affect the quality at all. But yeah, you can see they're definitely going hard on the Snow MO5 and I'm definitely here for it because it's, it's just good stuff. I mean, a lot of considerations with it. Again, like it's kind of nice that they give you the option in case you don't need certain components, you can kind of trim down the cost. So 190 for the plate bags, pretty reasonable, um, especially for like the features you get with it. But like the cover bun, I think that's another 50 or 55. Um, the shoulder pads, I forgot how much those were. But again, like the things will kind of add up. So I'm not sure what the actual cost is. Again, they did provide it for me. So full transparency for that one. Um, I didn't pay for this particular setup, but I can imagine if you are trying to purchase it and add certain creature comforts, um, it might get a little bit pricier. And um, yeah, but again, it is Snow MO5. So, I mean, if you want Snow MO5, you're gonna have to suck it up. <laughs> yeah. So they probably could monopolize it because it's got the Snow MO5 pattern. But I, I've talked to the people, I've seen where they design the gear, I've seen the thoughts that go into this gear. I can tell that they're proud of the work that they're producing and I'm all for it. Like I can tell that they want us to have a solid quality product with features that are actually important to us. So the gear works with us. Like again, having stuff like this, having the pads available if you, you, know, you need a little more airflow, having the options to have these shoulder pads is something that a lot of companies won't even do. So yeah, you might have to like, purchase all the different things individually but once you have all that stuff together and again you know you sometimes you might not need certain components but if you do want it and once you do have it everything together like it's an awesome product and i i'm i'm all for it but i think that is basically it again i do have some clips of me shooting with the plate carrier um there's no snow behind me so it doesn't look as cool but you can see that the gear is like working with me i'm not like fighting it too much um and yeah there are some plate carriers that I've used, like the Army's issued IOTV, you guys will always know, that's like my example of what not to do with a plate carrier. But there's definitely some plate carrier setups where you're really fighting it to do basic things. Um, and with this one, it was not the case whatsoever. So yeah, I'll kind of throw those clips throughout and I'll try and get some other clips or maybe some YouTube shorts where I'm actually rocking this. Hopefully if it snows like one more time, but I think winter is um, kind of wrapping up here in Washington. It's just raining at this point. Um, but yeah, that would be cool. So I can at least kind of show it in its natural habitats. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Let me know what you think. Um, again, if you're trying to get some solid MO5, snow MO5, some solid gear in general, where you can kind of like put everything together and kind of put what you only need into it, then this is a solid option. So I'll put the link for Vado Selecta's website down in the video description so you guys can go and check out the gear. But um, yeah, it's it's a solid setup, especially when you put everything together. Like it just looks super cool. And yeah, again, I think it's, it's going to last a pretty long time. It's gonna last a lot longer than I'm going to need it to because again, I don't use it in the snow too much, unfortunately. But I think it'll survive some, some heavy use anyway. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. Let me know what features you appreciated in this play carrier that you haven't seen in others, and maybe some things that you'd like to see changed as well. But again, they did provide the stuff for me, so full transparency for that. But I, you know, there's no point in doing a review if you're not gonna be kind of like honest about some of the input. So um, again, they are an awesome company, so I will always support them. And this is just a product that I can get behind. So it makes it a little bit easier to, you know, support a company that 
actually cares about what they're producing as opposed to just monopolizing something and just making a lot of money out of it. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, definitely go and consider checking out their website so you can get some cool stuff. If you don't want their Sarma issued or their Sarma branded stuff, you could also get some nice surplus gear and I've gotten a few stuff from them already. And yeah, they're always really solid when it comes to like shipping and stuff. They actually have like a really crazy shipping setup. Uh, if you guys haven't seen my Finland vlog, I would definitely go and check out the vlog just for that setup. It's, it's mind blowing. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. That is it for this one. I'll see y'all in the next one.